so this week, our theme is going to be around freezer foods. Um, so taking a break from the heat and getting into kind of how we can use the freezer. And uh, as we say every week, we're super thankful for our sponsor, Scotiabank, um, for supporting this program, as well as our partner, Foodshare, um, who you've been getting your food boxes from. So just a big, big shout out to those two partners that are supporting us. And last week, we were talking about leftovers. Um, we would love to know how you use the learnings from last week's class. Um, did you manage to use your leftovers last week? Let us know um, what you learned from that. And this week, we'll really be focusing on how to keep your produce fresh and ready to use for another day. So um, I'm excited to learn some tips and tricks about um, how we'll be using the freezer. Um, just kind of a reminder of kind of the logistics of the session. Um, so uh, as we always kind of go over with health and safety, making sure you're supervised by parent or guardian in the kitchen, um, when using equipment like the stove or knives, uh, make sure you're washing your hands before you do any food prep at home. So um, just an important tip before we dive into things. And then as well, just kind of logistics for um, the session is for engagement. Um, we would love if you can just be muted while Chef is gonna be doing the demonstrations. Um, obviously, we love to hear your voice and love to hear your questions. So uh, we will pause um, during the, you know, as Chef is cooking for any questions. So don't be afraid to come off mute when we do make those pauses. Um, we would love to see your faces if you're comfortable on video. Um, it's, it's really nice to see everyone. Uh, but if you don't feel comfortable with that, then um, no pressure either. And then please do use the chat. Um, we love to kind of, you know, if you're not kind of on um, taking yourself off mute or not on video, um, you can engage, ask us lots of questions in the chat and we can ask them for you as well. So please, please, um, yeah, just, just stay involved. I also want to introduce somebody that we have with us today. I'm really excited she's back. Uh, so Fiona, who uh, works in our kitchen regularly um, when we were open. So I'm just gonna throw it over to Fiona to just quickly uh, introduce herself. Hi guys, my name is Fiona. Um, you know me at Launchpad, I am chef's assistant and I help with some of the cooking programs. I'm really excited to be here today and we're help you guys all through this program. Yeah, so big welcome back to Fiona. Um, I'm super happy to have her back. Uh, she's got lots of kitchen expertise, so um, some more knowledge to share um, in our group. So that's really, really exciting. Um, and just a quick tip, if you've just uh, joined is as well, another thing you can do is just a quick trick, put yourself on, um, put this, the mode on speaker view, and that way you'll see a big screen of the person who is speaking. Um, so that's a really easy way to really see Chef in, in kind of big screen. So um, with those introductions being done now, I won't take up more time. I'm gonna throw it over to Chef B. Uh, thanks, Sonia. Um, I also wanna say welcome back, Fiona. Um, it makes me so happy that we're gonna be working together as a team. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be really great. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, all your uh, input for uh, what we're doing with this program. And, uh, uh, and myself, I'm really, you'll, you'll really love uh, engaging with, uh, with the kids and the parents and uh, um, um, we're gonna have a good time today. Um, so welcome back everybody to the program. Um, I'm just going to kind of get right into it. We're making a couple of things today. Uh, as Sonia has mentioned, we're, we're sort of talking about freezing, unfreezing, maybe a couple of tips on how to keep your, your uh, produce um, the fresh, fresh as it can be. Um, I'm just going to just, before I start cooking, uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the um, um, freezer. Um, um, I just Maybe not everybody knows exactly um, you know, what types of food are best stored in the freezer and at what temperature and, uh, and how long you can keep foods in the freezer. Uh, I, I know that my mother, uh, she had a big chest freezer uh, in her house and 
she saved things for a very long time sometimes. So um, the so really, I mean, ideally, you really don't want to keep your food in the freezer um, for more than you know ten months or so. Uh, and also, it depends on what kind of food that you're storing in the freezer. Um, if you're talking about you know meats like red meats or fatty meats. Um, probably five to eight months is, is, is the, the top, uh, eight months is probably the top end of that. Um, also, um, and maybe other meats like chicken, maybe a little longer, depending on uh, how big the piece is, like usually whole chickens would store as long as pieces of chicken. So roughly around 10 months for chicken. Um, fish is quite a bit uh, lower than that, like three to four months. Um, the leaner fish we can keep a little bit um, longer, and of course produce, the vegetables and fruits have quite quite a a, a, high, a long sh a freezer shelf life, um, probably eight to twelve months. So um, and ground meat also because it's it's been ground and processed. There's lots of air in there and fat pockets, and usually you would keep that maybe no more than three months uh, in the freezer. And um, as you can see, well, what happens to, to especially fatty foods is that the, um, the, the, uh, the enzymes are working and they're destroying the quality um, of the, the meat. And what winds up happening is it starts to cause the fats to oxidize and turn rancid. Um, and things with higher fats spoil uh, quicker. Um, even though bacteria can't grow in the freezer, um, it still doesn't stop the process of fatty foods of turning rancid. And maybe some people don't know that, so it's a good thing to know. And uh, also, um, you might want to, if you have the option to, and, or if you don't want to use it, you could trim off some of the fat and rewrap, you know, very fatty things, and that should keep it a little bit longer in the freezer. Um, and the ideal temperature is probably about zero degrees or below Fahrenheit. Um, so that, that, that's the, the, the right temperature to keep things the longest time that you can. Um, so if you have a freezer that isn't as cold as that, just think about that and don't store things as long in the freezer. So um, um, I guess maybe, maybe you've all heard the term freezer burn. And that is because uh, air often gets to the, the food that's in the freezer, starts to oxidize, and starts to break down. And, and also, it's, especially if things aren't wrapped properly, you get little tiny hard, uh, hard little pieces on the food, um, often caused by the dry freezer air. So um, it's very important to really wrap your, your uh, anything you put in the freezer, Make sure it's sealed properly uh, or, and wrapped really well. Um, uh, even if sometimes you, you go to the store and you'll buy like, a package of meat with a, with a, that's already pre-packaged, if you just throw it in your freezer, it's really best to rewrap all those things really tightly. And that'll help, um, it'll help with uh, keeping it long in the freezer. Um, anyway, so um, just a little bit about that uh, the freezer um, things. But, um, uh, we also have to talk about taking food out of the freezer. Uh, so that there's there's a few different ways um, to do that safely, uh, and I think the best way is to take your food out of the freezer and put it into the fridge for maybe six to eight hours if they're not too big, uh, and meats you might want a day or two. Um, that's the safest way to do it. Um, the next best method is taking your, your very well wrapped or sealed uh, items out of the freezer and running them under room temperature tap water. Um, the the water is a better conductor and it, therefore it will um, it will help to defrost the items quicker than just uh, leaving them up. So after saying all that, um, I we're going to make a couple of things today using um, Two very simple frozen foods that I often have in the freezer. We've got, so today we're going to make a corn and tomato salad. Um, corn and tomato salad. Uh, I'm using frozen corn and 
basically, um, now, I want to use it as cold as it can be. So I would, you, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to um, like cook it first or anything like that. You want it to stay as crisp as it can. And as I mentioned in the recipe, you can also use raw corn. Raw corn is great um, in salads. Um, so as uh, so long as you got some nice cold corn for the salad, uh, this is going to work well. Um, so we're going to do the corn salad, and, and we're also going to do uh, sort of a, a mashed, a slightly mashed lemony potato salad. Now, a, a couple of classes ago, I actually demonstrated it, but I thought it would go really nicely with frozen, with frozen peas. So I'm going to, so that's why I, I provided the recipe, and I'm going to, I'm going to make that again with the frozen peas in it. And, um, it's, it's very tasty with the lemon and uh, the olive oil, and uh, it lasts quite a long time in the fridge, as a matter of fact. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm, I'm going to start off with cooking the potatoes. I've got a bunch of potatoes right here. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for now. And I'm going to put that there. I'm going to get my knife. So I'm going to cut these potatoes into smaller pieces. Um, now, I'm doing it because I want them to, I want them to cook quickly. So I'm going to cut them into small dice like, oops, like this. So I'm going to have them down the center. Of course, holding my knife, as you can see how I'm holding it, making sure to always keep my, my fingers curled under. The knife blade will run against my knuckle, and I'll never uh, cut the tips of my fingers. It feels a little awkward like this, but if you keep doing it over and over again, you become very efficient at cutting things quickly. So, okay. cut a few of these up. My water is boiling right here, and I'm going to season my, my water with a little bit of salt to begin with. And now, once I have this going, once I have these potatoes cooking, um, I'm going to start on the corn salad. So I have to wait for this cook anyway. And it won't take long. At this, they'll probably take around 15 minutes. I think I'll just do one more. So I'm going to have this for my supper tonight. Okay, one more piece here. There we go. All right, my knife down. Okay, right into the water. I already have it boiling. I actually have this handy little pot that has a strainer, which is very great. It's really good for things like this. Okay, and just, I mean, whoever has joined me for the very first class and for the last time I made potatoes this way, um, I'm going to save this potato water to add back to the salad, and it's going to help to make it creamy. Okay, so that's done. Uh, so, Shafi, I just yeah. wanted to jump in. Uh, so I just want to let you know some folks are cooking at home. I know um, we have at least uh, Aaron and his parents are cooking at home. I would Great. love to hear if anybody else is cooking at home. Um, so it's just a request if it's possible to go a little bit slower because I know people are following along. Okay, I'll go slower. I think I spent a lot of time, a little bit of time talking about freezer stuff. Okay, so I'm putting about a teaspoon of salt into this water. And we've cubed the potatoes. They're all now in the water. And uh, as I said, it'll take about 15 minutes to cook. And while that's cooking, uh, I'm gonna get all my ingredients uh, ready for the corn salad. So um, I'll just show you what I have here. Well, first of all, uh, in the recipe, I, I mentioned that when you cut the green onions for this salad, we're gonna, we're gonna soak them in a little bit of in cold water. It's gonna take some of the heat away from the green onions for this particular dish. So we you don't, you don't always have to do that. As a matter of fact, for the potatoes, I'm not gonna do that. I want that, that bite, but this, I want this to be a little more subtle. So I have, a, I, have some, uh, I have some green onions here, and I'm going to cut them on an angle. You don't have to. You can cut them straight on, uh, but I'm just going to make them a little, a little bit fancy. So I'm just going to, as you can see, I've turned, I've turned my, um, the, the uh, onions on a slight angle, and I'm just going to slice them as thinly as I can. It doesn't have to be super thin. I mean, if you like green onions and you like them, Thick, go ahead and cut the thick. 
So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them up like that. There we go. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and use the whole onion. Here we go. So I have a bowl right here full of cold water already. So I'm gonna get that soaking first. I'll get the green onion soaking in the cold water. You don't have to do this. I just thought it was something maybe to offer you. Um, sometimes you add green onions to, to salads, uh, raw green onions to salads, and then when you go to eat the salad, you like the onion flavor, but sometimes it's too strong. So this is just a good thing to remember. Okay, so that's going. Now I'm gonna get my bowl right here, and I'll put that right here for a moment. And I have some tomatoes right here that I've already pre-cut. Um, I have a few more that I was gonna cut. Let me just get them, they're right here. Okay. Mm. Oh, no. Okay, they're all cut. I'll just cut these a little bit small. Okay. Fine. All right, so basically I had, I already cut them in small pieces. So you just wanna, you wanna cut them in bite-sized pieces, basically. Okay? Or if you like them chunkier, go ahead and, and, and uh, cut them chunkier than this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place my tomatoes right into the bowl. You can use any ripe tomato. I happen to have uh, some small tomatoes, so I've used those. But as I said, any ripe tomatoes are ideal for this type of salad. Um, and I have some corn. As I said, it could be, it could be fresh off the cob. Uh, it could be uh, frozen. And um, both will be, will be uh, just fine for this salad. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my corn. Like that. Another another question, Chef, um, is someone was asking, well, they're saying they're not making this recipe because they don't have corn. Could you use anything other than corn with the tomatoes? Uh, well, tomatoes go quite well with a lot of different things. Um, yeah, you can use other types of things. If you had other types of cooked, cubed, roasted vegetables, uh, like you could use you could use beans if you don't have, like you could use beans instead of corn, like canned beans or freshly cooked beans, green beans. Um, let's see, the same recipe. Uh, yeah, you could, could use lentils. Uh, you could use lentils, sure. Yeah, you could use lentils. Any kind of bean would go well. Yeah, be tasty. And as I said, most, most, um, like celery, celery, the chop up some carrots. Um, really, it, it's versatile because we're, we're really just putting a light dressing on top of, of, of into the salad. It's not very strong, and so it would go well with lots of different types of vegetables, cooked, roasted, or raw. So uh, I say experiment. <laughs> and, and feel free to add other things too. Like, this is just what you know. This is just one combination that that's, uh, that I really like. Um, but you can add other types of nuts or no nuts or different herbs. Okay, let's turn this down a little bit. Turn that down a little bit. Okay, so I've got the corn and the, I've got the tomatoes uh, right here. Um, and okay, so I've got these onions. Now, they haven't been sitting as long as uh, well, I had a few in here before I cut these ones, so I think they're going to be fine. So maybe I'll wait. I'll just wait till I finish the salad. Okay, so we'll leave those just a few more minutes. Um, and to to this bowl, I'm probably just going to season it with a little bit of bright, uh, red wine vinegar. Uh, I'm going to do the red, the vinegar first. I'm going to put the oil, olive oil last. I'm just going to put a little bit of vinegar. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. Now remember, don't, I would go with uh, the lower, the, the least amount of salt and pepper, because 
um, you don't want to have too much so you can't take it out. So I'll put a little bit of that. Um, also, uh, I'm going to add some basil and some, some mint, which I have right here. So I'm going to take um, some mint leaves. I'm going to take them right off the stem. I just picked them. Okay. Oh, and here's another, because I'm taking the mint off these stems, even though um, there is no mint in the potato salad recipe, I, I know that mint would be a good flavor with that as well. Um, so I'm going to throw those stems, right, these big long stems, right into that pot of potatoes. Why not add more flavor? There we go. I got some mint and some basil. I don't have a lot, of, I have more mint than basil actually. Okay, there, my stems are right in the potatoes and put that back in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, I, don't, I don't necessarily need to chop this very fine. If you don't, if, if you find the herbs too strong, use less. And if you don't like big pieces, just cut them smaller. I kind of like not too small pieces of things like this. So, I mean, I, I like the flavor. So I'm just gonna cut them just in a few pieces. Okay, so at this point, I have salt, pepper, and vinegar in this salad. Okay, so I'm going to taste it for vinegar. I'm going to add just a little bit more. There we go. Corn's very sweet, actually. It's very, it's really cold. Okay, so the vinegar's in there. Um, I'm going to throw in my herbs. Now, feel free if you find your vinegar is very tart. You can always, if you want, put in like the tiniest, just a tiny drizzle of honey, just a little bit if you want. You don't have to. Um, instead of red wine vinegar, you could add other kinds of vinegar. You could lemon juice, which I like to use a lot. Uh, I didn't use it today because um, I'm using it in the potatoes, so I thought just a little bit of a different acid. So we're going to mix that together. And I, oh. Put that here. Mine didn't have. Okay. All right. Uh, so there's a quick question um, on that recipe. When adding the vinegar, how okay. much vinegar would you add? Would you just keep adding and checking until it's like reach the desired taste, or? That's how I would do it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I would add, you know, at least a tablespoon to start with, and you could keep keep increasing it if you feel like it needs more. Yeah, sometimes it's better, even if you're looking at a recipe, start with a, a lower, like a, a less amount of vinegar or acid, and then sort of build up to it. And sometimes you might find your palate likes more than that. Like I often find when I'm, you know, if I'm looking at recipes, I often add more lemon juice to things because I just like it to be more lemony. So uh, I just think you have to trust your own taste. That's why I always say start off with less and then just keep tasting. Always have a couple of taste, tasting spoons nearby. So that, you know, if you're cooking with your family, for example, you can all kind of taste it and sort of say, hey, I like that. It's too tart. No, it's too sweet. It's too salty. So you kind of um, uh, build up confidence um, on how to, how to judge for yourself. Okay. So I hope that answered the question. So I have a pan here. Now, I could do this in the oven, but um, I have it right here. So I have a little bit of pistachios here. And I'm just going to put them in this pan over this heat. Now, it doesn't take long. Um, it doesn't take long to toast nuts. Usually like five, six minutes in the oven uh, for whole nuts, maybe seven or eight, depending how big they are. And you don't want to burn them. So you want to just, you want, you want to, as soon as you start smelling a nutty aroma, that's, that probably is uh, an indication that they're toasted um, from uh, nut. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to go back to my onions now. So while that's toasting, and I'm just sort of swirling it gently, you know, tossing them a little bit. I don't want them to burn. So I'm going to go back, and I would probably use a strainer, but I don't have one right here. So I'm going to put my green onions in. There we go. Got green onions right there. Okay. All right, I'm going to screw that in. 
I have my heat on actually a little bit higher, so it's, they're gonna they're gonna be ready soon. Don't put your hand in the pan. You just use a spoon. That's something I do. That I, no, don't do it. There, take it from the spoon, then blow on it. It's gonna be really hot. So okay. All right. That's toasted enough for me. Okay, I'm gonna turn those off. And now I've got some, uh, I've already toasted some croutons, and I'm gonna place the croutons in the bowl. You don't, you can omit the croutons. It's just, it's a, it's a, you could even use like bread crumbs, like maybe toasted, um, cooked in a little butter, like those panko crumbs. If you do it in butter on the stove, um, that's really nice too, to sprinkle onto the salads and different dishes. And I, because I had some cheese, I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna put that cheese in there. You don't need the cheese. There you go. Put a little cheese in there. Okay. Uh, I have a quick question. I, yeah. I don't know if you're going to get into it today. Um, do you have any tips for how you would make your own croutons at home? Oh, I do. Absolutely. Um, so basically, there's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you could use uh, melted butter or oil or olive oil. Um, I often just use olive oil, salt, pepper. Sometimes I might throw in, you know, you can throw in other things. Um, you know, maybe some dried spices, some sometimes garlic powder or fresh garlic. Um, you could also you could also um, sprinkle some grated cheese like Parmesan or Pecorino Romano and toast them in, a, in an oven. The thing is, I I think I, I, what I like for freshly cooked croutons, I like it to be crispy on the outside but tender, a little bit chewy on the inside. Some people like them really super crispy. I kind of like them that way. So I, I would cook them, you know, you can cook them uh, in an oven on a sheet pan. Um, as I said, put it in a bowl or just right on the sheet pan. Mix, put your oil on top, toss everything together with salt and pepper, uh, bake it in the oven. Um, it doesn't take long, five minutes to ten minutes usually. Um, depends on how hot your oven is. You know, you can start, you, you can do it in a 350 oven, 400, 450. You just have to keep watching it. So. Um, that's great. And there is a couple of other questions that came in. I just thought if questions are coming in, it might be a good time to pause and let folks ask their questions so oh. people don't have to just listen to me. Um, I wonder, Sierra, did you want to ask your question to Chef? Sure. I yes, yes I would. Oh, no. Pardon? We're just going to have Sierra go first and then Erin, I'll have you go next, okay? Chef B, I was wondering how toasted almonds would taste in this salad. Uh, toasted almonds would be fine too. Okay, thanks. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah, you know, on, like, but, you know, it's always good to try different things. It's, 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 so then you, can taste, you can taste the difference. I chose pistachios. Uh, I think it's a nice flavor with this, but also because I have uh, pistachios <laughs> as well. Uh, Great. Check. Yes. Great. And um, Aaron, did you want to ask your question? Yes. Um, so, um, uh, can the cheese be any cheese? You know, honestly, it, it could be. It, it could be any kind of firmer, hard cheese. Um, you know what I would do to te to test it? I would take a little bit of cheese that you might want to put in it and get the rest of the salad stuff ready and then take a spoon out add that cheese that you think might go well with it and try it all together that's what i would do because sometimes you think it's going to be a good combination and sometimes it isn't so then we yeah that's a good idea to do it that way yeah. great does anybody else want to ask any questions okay quick question Oh, yeah. Um, could you use like red onions, or a little bit of red onions instead of green onions? Yes, definitely. Definitely you could use uh, red onions. Yeah, red onions are, are really nice in salads like this as well. Yeah. Would right. you use the same tip for red onions as well? Would you soak them in the water if people like find the, the taste too strong? You can do that with uh, all onions. Uh, if, if some, like, sometimes, and sometimes the onion itself is just stronger um, than other ones that you might use. So 
Yeah, I, I, I often like throw, if I'm cutting a white onion for a salad, I'll throw it in, uh, in a bowl of water. Same thing, I'll let it sit for 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, just to, it depends if you want the, if you want it to be really strong or subtle. That's what, it just takes that, that bit, bitter, bitter, like really strong flavor away. It still, have, has, still has a nice onion flavor. Great, right. thank, thank you for ask, answering all our questions. We'll let you keep cooking now. <laughs> yes. no, I'm, so I'm done, so I'm actually done now. Uh, I've got the pistachios in here, the croutons, and uh, I'm just going to move this, just put this down below because I don't need it anymore, so I'll put it right here. And I'm going to bring out my platter that I'm getting ready for dinner. So I've already roasted my, uh, let's put this, yeah, I've already, no, let's do this. Okay. Okay, maybe I'll put it here. Can you see that? I've roasted, I've roasted chicken. And uh, I just have a little bit of greens here that I'm going to put the potatoes on, as a matter of fact. Uh, and I'm going to put my salad on the side. Let's see. I'm going to put my salad on the side. Right here. That's a lot of salad. Oh, I'll just put, that's enough for now. I'll put that much salad on there. Okay. And so when the potatoes are ready, I'm going to put the rest of them, uh, put the potatoes right there, and my whole dinner uh, is ready. So I'll put this back over here. Uh, I guess I could leave it there. That might be in the way. Okay, it's fine. All right, so um, my potatoes are ready. So I'm going to shake up the potatoes. I'm just going to put them in this pan right here. And I'm going to take out the stems because I don't want the, the mint stems. And you can smell, you can smell the mint. It's very nice. So I'll get rid of those. Now I have another, just because I don't want to move things around, I'm just going to use another pot. But I'm going to take this cup right here. And I'm going to save some of this potato water. I won't, I won't need this much, but I'm going to save some of that potato water. And I'm gonna now take my potatoes and I'm gonna put them into this pot. Whoops, there we go. Put that back in there for now. So, um, so I have the potatoes in here and I'm gonna get my potato masher, which is right there. And I'm gonna just, now I don't want them very mashed. So you can use just even a big fork or something. So I'm just gonna just kind of like hack at them a little bit. I don't, because they're, they're quite soft. If you cook them a little bit harder, they won't, they'll be a little bit firmer. Mine are just a little bit soft here. So I won't, I'm just gonna mix them lightly. Just, just a little bit, not even mash them, because they're already falling apart. So uh, I'm gonna add some, uh, I'm gonna add my salt and pepper. Now I do like a lot of pepper in these potatoes, so I'm gonna put a, little, a fair bit of pepper. And I'm gonna add some salt. Yeah, I, probably, I won't add too much. Uh, and then I'm going to add some lemon. I got a lemon right here. I'm going to cut this up right now. Let's see. There's not too many seeds, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Just squeeze it right in there. So, um, Shafi, I just want to ask there was a quick question. Did you um, boil the potatoes with the peel? I did. I did boil them with the peel. Yes. Nice. I actually have a trivia question for folks. Um, so I'm just going to launch that. The question is, um, true or false, are most of the nutrients in a potato found in the skin? So you can answer what you think, think it is. A couple of responses coming in. So it looks like most people, oh, we'll, we'll give a, a few other seconds for folks to answer. I don't wanna, I don't wanna sway people's answers. Oops. Okay. I think almost everyone has answered, so I'm gonna end it. So um, everybody guessed true. The answer
answer to this is actually, it surprised me, was false. So most of the nutrients in a potato are actually found in the potato itself, but what the skin does have is most of the dietary fiber. So um, if you answer true, like most of the fiber is in the skin of the potato, but a lot of the other nutrients are actually in the potato. So I thought that was a fun fact. Anyways, I'll throw it back over to you now, Shakti. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so I've got the potatoes in there, and I've changed to the spoon because I don't want to, I really just don't want to mash this up any more than it is. You can see it's kind of chunky. So um, to this, uh, I'm going to add some olive oil. I already have the salt and pepper in there. I have the lemon juice in there already. Oh, and I have some peas, and I have the hot water. But also, I do like green onions. You could use, you don't have to use them. You could use other herbs. You could use uh, chives, parsley, other flavors. But I do like green onions in here. So I'm just going to cut them thinly this way. And I'm not going to soak them in water, because I like the onion flavor in these potatoes. So I'm going to just cut this up. I mean, if you had other herbs, like dill, dill would be great in this too. I don't have any dill, so I'm using onions. Or we use onions and dill together. Okay. All done. We're going to put that right into here. I guess I could have waited, but it's okay. We're going to put everything in there at the same time. Um, I'll, I'll leave the peas till last. So I'm going to add a little bit of water because I, I want it to be a little creamy. And, and, the, and the, the water is flavored, so it gives it a really extra potato flavor that's really nice. Okay, so I've got everything in there. I'm going to taste it for salt, just to make sure it has enough, because I just want to make sure it has enough salt and pepper. Nope, it doesn't, so I'm going to add a little bit more salt. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna add more lemon. These were small lemons. I'm gonna add a little more lemon. This is what I mean about tasting things as, as you're going, because you, you, you start to begin to trust what you're tasting, and, you know, and, and what you like, you know? So there we go. That's gonna be enough, I think. Put that in there. It's got lemon juice in there, the water. I have some, pro I have the peas here that are just, uh, they're, they're a little bit warm. So maybe that's too many, so. Put that there, and mix that all up. A question came up around, um, Aaron was saying their potatoes aren't done yet. I think they were cooking along um, with, oh, maybe, maybe with their they, stove set to max. So is it just you having to wait a little bit longer, depending on their cooking temperature? I think, I think uh, the side, maybe they cook bigger pieces of potatoes, because I, I cook mine I mean, it, 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 yeah, it depends on when they, they, they got into the pot. So, um, I mean, I, mine were boiling just at a medium-high heat. I didn't have them simmering. So maybe my cubes of potatoes were smaller than theirs. Is that answering the question? Um, I think so. I think it's... Things are going a little bit fast, but um, but yes, okay. that answers the question. So, um, if they want me to, because my, my potatoes are ready, I can easily walk them through it if they want to. Uh, if they want that to happen, I could go over it again. Okay, so uh, my potatoes. Um, are chef, um, you um, our potatoes um, for some reason, uh, they've been taking a while to cook. Um, we then uh, we put it at max. Now we put it at free because we think it's uh, a bit a bit too hot. Okay, so your potatoes aren't quite ready, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, m that's fine. M mine are ready, but if you if you want, when yours are ready, we can go over again uh, what to put into it if you'd like. Thanks.
Right, yeah. So what we'll do, Erin, is um, once we once we let Chef finish up, then um, for anyone who wants to stay on the call and see kind of a repeat of what she did or for her to walk you through it again, we can do that after we finish up. Back to okay. you, Chefy. Okay, well, um, here we go. I've got everything, uh, put that down here for now. Um, I have my dinner. My dinner's all ready here. I should put, I got more salad here actually. Okay, so I'll just put the rest of my salad on there. Okay. This is an awkward bowl to hold. Okay. Okay, there we go. And there we have a uh, complete meal. We've got roasted chicken, we've got our, potato, our, our warm potato salad, and our corn and uh, corn and uh, tomato salad. And uh, I hope you enjoy, uh, if you've been cooking along with me, I hope you enjoy uh, your, your, your dinner. And if not, try, try this recipe um, uh, one night for dinner. So thank you for, for watching. Does anybody have any uh, questions for me? Um, so if anybody wants to come off mute and ask any questions for Chef, um, please feel free to do so now. I've also just launched a poll just to get your feedback on the class. So please make sure you answer that. Um, but yeah, would, would love to hear if anyone has any questions or how it's going at home cooking. Um, um, maybe I can uh, give you a tip about uh, corn. Maybe the best way to, to cook frozen corn is, even though it says to uh, put it on the stove and boil it in water, um, a better way, I think, it keeps it more crisp. You saute your frozen corn in a pan. Run it, run it, run it under cold water if it's frozen and drain it really well and, and then saute it in a pan maybe with a little bit of butter and if your corn sometimes frozen corn isn't super sweet and you and you like it sweet um, you could add a little bit of honey uh, when you're sauteing with butter and it's, it just it keeps it nice and crisp instead of boiling it on the top. I have a question. What's your question? What does it taste like? What does it taste like? Has the salad? Mm -hmm. What does it taste like? Well, I'm going to tell you. Well, it tastes, it's a very nice balance. You can taste the corn. The corn is, the potatoes and the green onions are very mild. And then there's a nice burst of, a nice bite from the pistachio nuts. And all the dressing has been soaked up by the croutons. And then, <laughs> so it's a very fresh summer salad. A little Sounds bit tart and sweet from the, the sweet corn. Sounds good. Mm, it's good. Mm -hmm. The, you were giving tips about how long food should be in a freezer for. I was wondering about a turkey, a whole turkey. Oh boy, a turkey. <laughs> uh, you know, how long it should be in the freezer for? Well, how long it would still be good for, out of the, like if it had been in the freezer? I, I, still, I still think I would follow the poultry rule. Um, I, 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 I would probably keep it in the freezer for, they're so big too. Um, I think I'd still follow. Uh, Probably less than 10 months. Uh, I have to check the exact, they're much bigger than chicken. Yeah. Probably 10 months, maybe. Okay. So it's probably still good. <laughs> In your freezer? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, I need to defrost it in the fridge. And, and yes, it takes, a, it takes such a long time to defrost it. Yes. 
um, another good, uh, uh, another uh, a good item um, to keep in the freezer is uh, nuts and seeds. You know, sometimes you want to you want nuts for something or seeds for something, and um, um, they, sometimes they come in big packages and you can't use them all. And same with things like shredded coconut, things like that, things that don't last long in a package. I find that nuts, seeds, and shredded coconut, they wind up going rancid sometimes if you don't keep them in a cooler place. Uh, so wrapping them really well and storing them in the freezer is a great idea for those items. I mean, sometimes if you don't wrap the coconut, it, it could dry out a little bit. Um, but, you know, definitely nuts and seeds are, uh, um, they, they have a low, low moisture content. So they, they do really well in the freezer. And that way you can, you know, if you, you, you want to use just little bits for salad and for crunchy you know, toppings for different dishes that you make, you'll always have them fresh. And that's, that's the class today. Um, just to see if I have anything left here that I can, uh, what else can I talk about here? Um, oh, you know what I could talk about? Let's say you've got fresh, uh, fresh produce, like, you know, uh, beans, for example, um, and you want, you've got an, an abundance of, of, of a fresh vegetable and you want to store them in the freezer. I say mostly like the best idea um, is to maybe blanch them really quickly in hot salted water, a little bit of salt, and just, just for a minute or so and drain them and dry, make, make sure they're all dry. Now at this point, you could, you could store them in, those, in, in, in uh, airtight, you know, plastic, you know, bags if you want, um, and you could lay them flat inside and you can kind of stack them in your freezer. Um, or you could put them on a rimmed baking sheet um, with, and let, let them freeze individually, which sounds like, you know, it's a pain, but, you know, at least you, then you could, put, you could, when they're frozen, you can put them into a sealed container um, and put them back into the freezer. Um, that's a very good way to, to, uh, to freeze uh, uh, fresh, uh, some fruits too. If you've got uh, blueberries when they're in season or strawberries uh, or you buy a, a thing of strawberries and they go, they, they go, um, they spoil so quickly that um, when you, let's say you get some on sale, you buy some on sale, it's a, that's a really great method. Just, you know, put them on a, a rim sheet, freeze them, and then when they're frozen, plop them into a container and make sure they're sealed well and keep them, into the free, keep them in the freezer. So you see, there's lots of different um, uh, fresh produce you can do the blanching method with. Um, one way, you know, sometimes um, I, I take my kale and I'll chop it. I'll wash it, of course, dry it. I'll chop it and I won't cook it or anything. I'll just, I'll freeze them in little containers because sometimes the, the kale bunches are so big and I don't use it all. Um, it turns out that when you saw, when you cook kale from the freezer, it, it winds up being more tender because sometimes kale is a little bit um, uh, tough. So it, the, the, the freezing process sort of helps break down the, the membranes of, of, of certain green vegetables. And uh, so it's kind of a good way to, to store them, kale in particular. There's another good tip there. Um, anybody else have any questions about uh, our topic today? So I think if there are no more questions, um, we can wrap up here. Um, what we will do is, as we were saying before, um, we'll go back over what to do with the potatoes, because I know there was a request for that. But if you don't want to see the potatoes or hear about the potatoes again, um, and you have no more questions, you can feel free to jump off as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. It was really lovely to see, see you all.